Okay, you're live. This is, this is Commissioner Schweiger. Good evening and welcome to the Scottsdale Historic Preservation Commission remote public meeting. The purpose of the Historic Preservation Commission in part is to establish standards necessary to preserve the historic character of resources designated historic, develop, maintain, and from time to time amend plans for the preservation of resources, resources of historic significance in the city and review proposed alterations to historic and archeological resources through the certificate of appropriateness process. Until further notice, meetings will be held electronically and remotely. While physical facilities are not open to the public, meetings are streamed to the city YouTube channel to allow the public to listen, view the meeting in progress. Only written comments submitted electronically are being accepted. To be considered, please submit your written public comment on an agenda item at least 90 minutes before the meeting scheduled time. The agenda consists of the roll call, the administrative report, minutes uh, and the approval of the prior, prior meeting, regular agenda and non-action items during which no vote will be made by the commission. I remind our audience that the review relates to historic preservation matters and does not include consideration of existing zoning district designations, zoning entitlements, or the allowed uses within the zoning districts. The commission's motion may be to approve, to approve with modified stipulations, to deny the request, or to continue the case. Thank you for your interest in time. Now we will begin the meeting with a roll call. Chair Schweiger. Present. Vice Chair Davis. Present. Commissioner Brousseau. Present. Commissioner Edmonds. Present. Commissioner Fadok. Absent. Commissioner Hosmer. Present. Commissioner Kinchin. Present. Thank you. The first action of the commission will be the administrative report by Doris McClay. Doris McClay. Chairman Schweiger and commission members, um, the, com the commission has received correspondence regarding changes to the refuse pickup in historic districts. Refuse operations are not the purview of the Historic Preservation Commission. Any new screening proposed by property owners in historic districts for the purpose of screening the refuse containers would have to be reviewed for approval um, for a certificate of appropriateness or certificate of no effect. Um, that concludes my administrative report. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. McClay. Um, the next action of the commission will be the approval of the meeting minutes. Are there any corrections to the minutes by any of the commission members or any additions or changes? Commissioner Hosmer. I'm going to make a motion to approve the January 7th, 2021 meeting minutes. Thank you, Commissioner Hosmer. Do I have a second? This is Commissioner Edmonds, I second. Uh, can we do a roll call vote? Thank you. Chair Schweiger? Yes. Vice Chair Davis? Yes. yes. Commissioner Brousseau? Yes. Commissioner Edmonds? Yes. Commissioner Hosmer? Aye. Commissioner Kinchin? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. This moves us into regular agenda item number three, the 2020 Historic Preservation Commission annual report. Ms. McClay, were you going to present about the annual report? Doris McClay, Chair Schweiker and commission members. Uh, so the the report um, is a uh, is all the action that was done um, last year. Um, if you don't have any changes, um, you can do a motion to approve the report, and that would be sent to our city council. Thank you. Thank you. Any comments or a motion, Commissioner Davis or Vice Chair Davis? Yes, I have one question on page three the current member attendance, it appears that some of the commissioners were present for 10 meetings. 
but there's a couple of us that were present for eight or nine, but absent zero meetings. So I'm not sure why the numbers don't add up. Chair and Commissioner, Vice Chair Davis, um, we can check, uh, double check those um, those numbers, the meeting dates, and um, correct that. Did you want to make a motion with that corrected? Yes, this is Vice Chair Davis. I'd like to make a motion to um, amend if needed the annual report. Um, Vice Chair Davis, do you want to approve with um, possibly amended um, attendance report? Yes. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Hosmer. Hi, Peter Hosmer. I had a question about the uh, Historic Preservation Certificate of Appropriateness for case number 59 HP 2019. Um, it states in the, the heading there, the commission approved the Certificate of Appropriateness for the following product projects at historical residential properties. That particular item 59 HP 2019 was not approved, it was just continued. And I wondered if that, uh, if there was a further explanation for that or whether that was an error. Thank you. Chair Schweigert and Commissioner Hosmer, I'm double checking that right now. Our system shows that it was approved, but I will check uh, the minutes and then amend that if if needed. Commissioner Hosmer, did you have further comment? Yes, I think the same thing applies to case 18 HP 2016 number two. Thank you. So, um, Let's see, we have a, um, uh, um, I didn't call for a motion, but we do have a motion on the table that doesn't cover the changes that uh, Mr. Hosmer has proposed. And um, I'm a bit unsure about how to proceed from here. Unless we follow the relaxed rules um, in which we can have uh, Vice Chair Davis amend her original motion. This is Vice Chair Davis. I would like to make a motion to approve the annual report with the investigation and possible amendments to the um, meeting participation and the two cases Commissioner Hosmer brought up. Do I have a second? Commissioner Hosmer. I'll second that motion, thank you. Okay, can we do a roll call vote please? Chair Schweiger. Yes. Vice Chair Davis. Yes. Commissioner Brousseau. Yes. Commissioner Edmonds. Yes. Commissioner Hosmer. Aye. Commissioner Kinchin. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that moves us into regular agenda item number four, discussion on Historic Preservation Commission bylaws. Uh, Ms. McClay? This is Doris McClay. Chair Schweigert and commission members, um, we'd like an annually to review our bylaws to see if there's any changes that are necessary. At this time, staff um, suggest adding um, our commissioner announcements to the bylaws. And Joe Padilla from our uh, legal department is here to discuss this. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Okay, yeah, this is Joe Padilla, members of the commission, uh, chairperson. So the suggestion is that 
the commission announce, announcements be added to the bylaws and then uh, some rules or structure be added to that so that there is an understanding of uh, what the announcements uh, would entail and no discussion uh, because it, it would, oftentimes I think these announcements kind of sort of just come up and possibly have a rule that says that if you know of an announcement ahead of time, you could contact staff and we could then uh, agendize it also that we would be in compliance with the open meeting law. So we would be then uh, drafting something up for your review, bring it back to you for the next meeting for discussion and possible uh, uh, rewrites if necessary. And um, then if you were to adopt it, uh, they would go into effect for the next meeting. Oh, that's wonderful. I really appreciate that. I personally think that's a great idea. This is uh, uh, Chair Schweiger. Are there any other comments regarding that from the commission or from staff? Okay, since it's a non-voting item, um, we look forward to it being in, at our next meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Padilla. Okay. Are there any other comments from the commission regarding the bylaws? Okay, I will move on then. That moves us to regular agenda item five. 1 GP 2021, the draft of the Scottsdale General Plan 2035. I believe this is Aaron, um, Adam Yaron that would be speaking. Uh, Chair Schweiger, uh, Adam Yaron is actually here, but this is Taylor Reynolds and I'll be, oh, okay. I'll, I'll be guiding you through tonight. Um, so you get to hear a, a different voice for once. Um, so um, thank you, Chair Schweiger. Um, Members of the commission, I'm Taylor Reynolds with Long Range Planning, here to present case 1GP 2021, the draft general plan 2035. As you may recall, I was here a year ago uh, asking for one of you folks to sit on our citizen review committee um, and Chair Schweiger graciously accepted and uh, sat through many a meeting um, that we'll get to later in these slides, um, but we'll provide a high level look at the general plan update process and take you through a couple of the uh, elements uh, that pertain to your, to your purview and see if you have any additional comments you'd like to add uh, moving forward. So next slide, please. In terms of what a general plan is, many of you may know it's a, it's a broad policy-based document. Um, it is not something that is rigid or static or regulatory like the zoning ordinance. Um, it guides more specific planning through its broad-based goals and policies, and it is not just the land use map. Next slide. The general plan is uh, state statute required and effective up to 10 years. Uh, currently, we are still operating on a 2001 general plan that was ratified by public vote in 2002. Next slide. As I stated, it, it, uh, as per state statute, it should be uh, uh, updated every 10 years. Uh, the city went through that effort um, with the 2011 general plan update, which had broad uh, and extensive public outreach uh, and added new state statute required elements and was uh, adopted by the city council in 2011. Next slide. However, that plan failed at the public vote of 2012, which was a special election. And therefore the 2001 general plan, as I stated, still remains in effect and we operate, it on, operate under it today. Next slide. Again, uh, it, between the years of 2012 and 2014, uh, we uh, underwent another update effort, which started off with a visioning town hall and a, another council appointed task force. Um, that again had extensive public outreach uh, within this draft plan and however it did not go through the public hearing process um, that is required of such in, in terms of going in front of plan commission city council for possible adoption and moving on uh, for ratification by public vote so as such since it did not go through that public hearing process it, ha it has been utilized as a baseline plan for the citizen review committee process next slide that citizen review committee was 
uh, made up of 13 members from these 13 boards and commissions. As I stated, Chair, your Chair Schweiger was on um, our Citizen Review Committee. Uh, next slide. Uh, the, the Citizen Review Committee met throughout 2020, uh, all through COVID restrictions, so we were online the entire time. They completed their charge by reviewing the entire draft plan, inclusive of the review and consideration of, as you can see, there are a large number of public comments submitted, over 300 that they went through line by line and reviewed to ensure that this draft plan was brought further up to date. Uh, and incorporated further clarity and where necessary incorporated new goals and policies. Um, again, so today's presentation will include some highlights of some of those major updates specific to your commission. Next slide. Where we are in the timeline is phase four. Again, we're in the, the state statute required adoption process that I uh, spoke about previously and that we will be going before um, uh, Planning Commission City Council for possible adoption. And then that would take us on to phase five, which would be possible consideration of voter ratification in November of this year. Next slide. In terms of that draft plan, there are three main sections. The, the bulk of which is the section two where all the elements are housed. Um, our specific plan has 23 elements 17 of which are state mandated elements that we must have, uh, six of which are uh, community created, three of those were from the 2001 general plan uh, effort, and three are new elements to the general plan, one of which the tourism element was uh, specifically penned by uh, the citizen review committee. Next slide. As I stated, we will be going through um, some of the sections that are specific to your uh, commission's purview. This slide merely notes, if you were looking at the legislative version, it's notating the legend for such, so um, folks could um, discern where ideas or uh, I guess uh, where, where some of the, the text came from, uh, light blue being specifically from the Citizen Review Committee and so on and so forth on this slide. Uh, next slide. First element we'll be discussing uh, briefly is the arts, culture, and creative community element which broadly talks about uh, our, our standing within the uh, regional standing uh, for cultural amenities, arts and cultural programming, but more specific um, to this uh, commission is ACC4 or goal four, which is protect historic and cultural resources, which we'll go over in the next slides. Next slide. Um, as you can see, we, we will go page by page through this element, um, and I'll try and highlight some of the changes that you see here. Uh, for this specific uh, introduction to the element, which was initially penned by the, uh, the task force in that 2014 effort, uh, uh, some updates have occurred, uh, generally uh, to provide further background and clarity to the element introduction and to further highlight um, signature public art events such as canal convergence. Uh, next slide. This spread, and more particularly on the right side of the, the screen, you can see that um, the, the green text that denotes the deletion for ACC 2.3 on the bottom right, that was moved to that new uh, tourism element that I spoke to in a previous slide. Um, but otherwise, you can see that the CRC reinforced previously drafted content related to arts programming. Next slide. Um, for this, uh, slide you can see on the left hand side of the screen nothing was really touched by the crc and that again they're reinforcing what was previously and they they feel that it's still relevant today they're reinforcing uh what was previously drafted in previous efforts but on the right side of the screen they incorporated some public comment as you can see in the red text uh more specificity related to the scottsdale source historic register and furthermore, um, having preservation programs that reach out to local schools as well. Next slide. And finally, the only map that's present in this uh, element is the existing art and cultural resources element. And really uh, the changes here were to bring it up to date with more recent cultural assets being placed on this map. Next slide. The final element we'll be talking about this evening is the neighborhood preservation and revitalization element um, that, and it recognizes that the preservation and revitalization of Scottsdale's nature, neighborhoods is critical to maintaining and strengthening the health, safety, prosperity, and enjoyment of the 
community. In uh, in particular, goals one and two have purview to the, or this commission has purview to, and that uh, goal one uh, speaks to preserving neighborhood character, and goal two, um, it should say promotes home ownership reinvestment. Next slide. Again, the, um, this really shows that the CRC reinforced previously drafted content related to uh, the, the elements introduction. So not a lot of changes here. Next slide. As you can see on this spread, uh, generally um, re the CRC reinforced previously drafted content. However, they furthered the conversation related to historic properties with uh, NPR 1.3. They utilized some public comment that we received, as you can see, it's in red. Um, to have more specificity uh, where it says where appropriate seek historic designation for the preservation of such features um, that are, you know, enrich the character or define neighborhoods. And then uh, NPR 2.3, you can see is a, a new uh, policy that we received through public comment to support programs to facilitate sen sensitive rehabilitation improvements to historic designated properties. Next slide. On the left, you can see a lot of the text there was reinforced, not a lot of change, however, um, uh, except to add more specificity regarding maintaining strong uh, communities uh, for goal NPR 5. And even more important to this commission on the right hand side of the screen is the historic neighborhoods and neighborhood plans map where we ho house just that historic neighborhoods are notated on there that has been that have been designated and the only update here was the addition of uh, the sands north as you can see on the northern portion of the screen just south of indian ben road along scottsdale next slide the implementation chapter is really um, a way for the plan to further come together and to show the community those things that could be specifically implemented as a result of the general plan. For this uh, commission, you can see on the bottom portion, the historic and archeological preservation program update could really inform some programs that you folks undertake. And staff's input, as you can see in green, has moved uh, that program from years five to 10 of the implementation timeline of this plan to years one through five. Next, next slide, please. In terms of the next steps, we'll be going before all, all the other boards and commissions that participated in the citizen review committee process. We'll be having some virtual community open houses to garner further input from the community. And everything that we uh, garner there will go before planning commission and city council for, uh, for them to further review and um, within the review timeline of the plan. And then we have in June, a possible adoption by city council. And again, as per state statute, if city council were to adopt, that would put us on the next uh, uh, election cycle, which would take us to November of 2021. Next slide, please. So if I, in terms of um, Collecting further commentary, as I stated, we will have some uh, public uh, virtual open houses um, that are available for folks to sign up for online currently. Um, the other option that folks can have is to provide written comment online. Uh, if you were to search general plan updates on our website, that would take a, you to a site that would not only allow you to sign up for those open house opportunities, but also provide your written comment. And uh, commission members outside of this meeting could provide a written comment if they see fit um, in their citizen capacity as well. Uh, next slide. So that wraps it up for um, staff's presentation. Um, we're here to collect any further comments you might have on the plan. Again, I just wanna highlight the effort and input put forth by the CRC and membership directly from your commission through um, member Schweiger. Um, it's been very much appreciated. Um, however, if there's further input on the, the board would like to provide staff is here to collect such. Thank you so much, Mr. Reynolds. Is there any comment from the commission? This is Chair Schweiger. Okay. Seeing none, I hope all of you go and check it out and put any comments that you feel necessary on the website. That includes the listening public as well. Thank you so much, Mr. Reynolds. Thank you. Okay, that leads us into 
regular agenda item number six, 29 HP 2017, number two, the Villanueva roof replacement. Good evening, Chair Schweiger and uh, commissioners. This is Brian Clough with the city's current planning department. Uh, I'll be giving you a brief overview of the application 29 HP 2017 number two. Next slide, please. Uh, the request before you tonight is from the property owner for a certificate of appropriateness and approval of the historic residential exterior rehabilitation program funding for roof roof replacement for a townhome within the Villa Monterey uh, units one through seven historic district. Next slide, please. The site is located generally in the area south of Chaparral and east of Miller Road in the Villa Monterey historic district highlighted in yellow on the screen there. Next slide, please. Here's a closer look at the site northwest of the intersection of 76th Place and East Thornwood Drive. Surrounding developments in the area are single family townhomes within the Villa Monterey Historic District. Next slide, please. This is the uh, zoning designation on the property, which is townhome residential R4 with the historic property overlay. Um, all the surrounding properties in that vicinity are also uh, R4 HP. Uh, and then to the west on the other side of Miller Road is multifamily residential R5 with the historic property overlay as well. Next slide, please. Here are a couple context photos of the front of the home that's the subject of the application. It is a single story flat roof structure. The front of the home also includes a parapet and a small section of gable roof with clay tile. Next slide. These photos are showing the existing flat roof system that is proposed to be replaced with the application. The top left photo is a view towards the rear of the home, uh, showing the flat roof continuing all the way to the edge of the house with the uh, lower photo and the photo on the right angled more towards the front of the home, showing the existing parapet and the tile roof feature that's on the front of the home. Next slide. The scope of work within the application is to replace the existing roof with a polyurethane foam roofing system, as well as replacing the underlayment uh, under the tile roof elements, uh, which would involve removing and replacing the existing tiles and then also replacing skylights. Next slide, please. The applicant did provide several cost estimates uh, with her application. Um, she was able to narrow those down to the top three, uh, which is shown on your screen here from three different contractors. Uh, and then uh, further narrowing it down, it, she's leaning towards the cost estimate number one of customer first roofing, uh, which has the quote of 13,665. Um, so the request is a maximum of 50% of that, not to exceed 7,500. Next slide, please. So again, just to summarize, the uh, applicant is requesting uh, approval for the certificate of appropriateness for the proposed work, as well as the funding for the HRER program reimbursement. Next slide, please. That concludes staff's presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have for staff. Um, the applicant is also on the line and uh, is prepared to address the commission as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Clark. Um, uh, Ms. Villanueva, do you wish to speak to the, the commission before we start discussing? You might have to star um, six to unmute Cecilia. Thank you. Okay. While I wait for her to come on, are there any questions, comments from the commission? Commissioner Hosmer? Well, I just, Peter Hosmer, I just want to commend uh, the applicant for taking advantage of this opportunity to get the roof 
uh, paid for, or at least a portion of it. Um, it's a terrific program the city has, and it's always good that uh, you can take advantage of that. Thank you. Cecilia, can you uh, star six to unmute, please? Um, were there any other comments from the commission? Yes, Commissioner Hosmer. Uh, unless there's any further comments from the rest of the members, um, I'll make the motion. Oh, I, you know, I, I think that bearing any other questions, um, Go right ahead. <laughs> anyway, I'll make a motion to uh, approve case number 29 HP 2017 number two uh, with the uh, stipulations as indicated on attachment A. Thank you. Okay, uh, Commissioner Kinchin. I will second that motion. Okay. Can we have a roll call vote? Chair Schweiger? Yes. Vice Chair Davis? Yes. Commissioner Brousseau? Commissioner Brousseau? Hear me? Sorry about that. Yes. How's that? Yes, thank you. Commissioner thank you. Edmonds? Yes. Commissioner Hosmer? Aye. Commissioner Kinchin? Yes. Thank you. Can I have a motion now to approve the HRER funding? Commissioner Hosmer? I will also make a motion to approve uh, 29 HB 2017 number two for the HRER funding. Thank you so much. Commissioner Kinchin? I will second that motion. Can we have a roll call for the HRER funding? Chair Schweiger? Yes. Vice Chair Davis? Yes. Commissioner Brousseau? Yes. Commissioner Edmonds? Yes. Commissioner Hosmer? Yes. Commissioner Kinchin? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, congratulations, Ms. Villanueva. Uh, that takes us to regular agenda item number seven. 10 ZN 2020, the Kimsey Triangle. I believe that uh, Mr. Clough will present again. Yes, thank you, uh, Chair Schweiger and commissioners. This is Brian Clough again with the city's current planning department. <clears throat> the, uh, the next application is a zoning application, 10 ZN 2020. The Kimsey, uh, it's a zoning district map amendment that includes a historic property overlay. Next slide, please. Uh, so the specific request this evening from the Historic Preservation Commission is a recommendation to the Planning Commission and City Council regarding the zoning change on the subject property uh, from a C2 DO district to our downtown, downtown multiple use type two plan block development downtown overlay, including a historic property overlay on about 0.4 acres of the overall 3.7 acre site. Along with that is a draft historic preservation plan for the HP portion of the site. Next slide, please. The subject site is located on the north side of Indian School Road and between North Marshall Way and Scottsdale Road in the city's um, Old Town area. Next slide, please. The site is currently occupied 
by the Howard Johnson Hotel, the venue, and the Kimsey building in the southwest corner of the site, which is the subject of the request before you this evening, um, highlighted with the HP site designation at the lower right corner there. The surrounding area consists mainly of one and two story retail service and gallery shops constructed through the 1960s, 17, 1960s 70s and 80s and a three story office building borders the site to the east. Next slide please. This is the uh, existing zoning designation on the property of C2 downtown overlay. Next slide please. And then the proposed zoning designation with our downtown district along with the plan block development and then in the lower right hand corner of the subject site area you can see the portion of the site over the Kimsey building that is proposed for the historic property overlay. Next slide please. This here is the proposed site plan for the overall development plan. Uh, the goal of the applicant's overall zoning request is to redevelop the property with a mixed use development that will include a seven story hotel with 168 guest rooms and a seven story residential building with 230 units. Uh, also a component of the development plan is preservation of the two story Kimsey building designed by Ralph Haver in 1961 and constructed in 1962. The Kimsey building sits on approximately 0.4 acres at the southeast corner of the development plan and that's outlined in green uh, on the slide in front of you. In addition to the new buildings on the site, the applicant will also be enhancing the streetscapes and pedestrian circulation along Indian School Road and 3rd Avenue with new sidewalks and landscaping, as well as a new north-south pedestrian co connection bordering the eastern property line. Next slide, please. This here is a closer look at the site plan uh, zoomed in to the area around the existing Kimsey building. Um, <clears throat> The applicant will be upgrading this site uh, in the area adjacent to the building. Uh, this will include the surface parking located with, between the building and the street. Uh, the existing parking lot includes angled parking spaces on both sides of the existing drive aisle there. Uh, the spaces are proposed to be converted to 90 degree spaces on the north side of the driveway and the spaces will be removed completely on the south side of the driveway. So those modifications will help the efficiency of the parking area and also allow for some of the new streetscape improvements on Indian School Road. Uh, <clears throat> on this uh, plan, you can also see some of the landscaping that'll be located around the building. Um, you can see the, the context of the adjacent buildings that will be constructed around it to the, to the west and the north, mm -hmm. as well as the proposed pedestrian connection along the right hand of the side of the screen there, uh, which will connect Indian School Road to Third Avenue to the north. Next slide, please. Uh, this here is the proposed building elevation uh, relative to the existing Kimsey building. This is the southern elevation, uh, which would be facing Indian School Road. So what you're looking at is the proposed residential building that has 230 units in it. The building height here is approximately 90 feet. Uh, to the lower right of the building elevation, you can see the uh, existing Kimsey building. Next slide, please. This is the Eastern building elevation to show the context of the uh, Kimsey building, which is in this elevation towards the lower left of the overall building elevation. And you can see the, you can see some of the building step backs uh, from Indian School Road that uh, the massing of the taller residential building uh, will be stepped back from the street as well as the uh, Kimsey building. Next slide, please. And this here is a perspective to give you a little more of a three-dimensional view of the, the overall setting uh, and the, the context and massing of the uh, proposed building relative to the existing site conditions. Next slide, please. And the applicant also includes a draft historic preservation plan and design guidelines with the application. Uh, this includes a detailed history of the Kimsey building and the building's historical significance. The, the plan's policy 
policies and guidelines in chapter three and recommendations for preservation in chapter four are intended to preserve the significant features of the building and the site. And this is a draft plan that will move forward with the zoning application. If the city council approves the zoning request for the historic property overlay, this plan would then come back to the historic preservation for final review and approval. Uh, and if uh, with along with the city council approval of the historic property overlay, um, the site would then uh, become subject to this plan. Uh, so any future proposed modifications to the building would be reviewed in accordance with this plan uh, and be subject to the Historic Preservation Commission. Uh, this plan in its entirety has been included in your packets uh, under attachment number four. Next slide, please. The uh, public participation associated with the applica application, uh, since it is a zoning district map amendment, uh, did include a 750 foot radius mailing from both the city and the applicant to all property owners in that area. The applicant also hosted two open house meetings, one in March of 2020, and then more recently in January of 2021. Um, there were six letters of support received that were included in your packet. Uh, and then since then, we have received several additional uh, letters along with a petition that are all in support of the proposed zoning district map amendment along with the historic property designation. And uh, up to this point, we have not received any public opposition regarding the proposal. Next slide, please. And again, the action requested tonight is a recommendation to the Planning Commission and City Council regarding the zoning district map amendment, including the historic property designation on 0.4 acres of the overall 3.7 acre site, including the draft historic preservation plan. Next slide, please. And that concludes staff's presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have for staff. And there also is a highly qualified applicant team who is here and will be making a more detailed presentation than I. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Clough. Okay, before we move on, I believe we have a public comment from Allison King. Hi. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, don't Great, well, fantastic. Sure, this is, uh, this is Allison King and I live at 464 North 11th Place in Phoenix, Arizona. And I'm speaking to you tonight in support of the Kinsey Project. I was born and raised in Scottsdale and I'm a product of its school system. Scottsdale Civic Center Plaza played a central part in my development. And so this city has indelibly molded who I am. Our churches, schools and civic places have instilled in me a love for modern architecture. And so I've spent the last 18 years researching and publishing content about modern architecture in Arizona, sharing it with the global design community on my website, modernphoenix.net and ralpaver.com. Many have claimed that this endeavor is responsible for putting Phoenix Metro on the map as a destination for heritage tourism in mid-century modern architecture. And I'm not just talking about tourism for that other architect, you know, the one that we named a big boulevard after. It's for the little gems too, like the Kimsey building. And I'll tell you what gave me first hope that this status on the national stage could be accomplished. It was a presentation that I attended more than 16 years ago by former Scottsdale HP Commissioner Debbie Abel and Grady Gamis Jr. where they built a case for the preservation of architecture by Ralph Haver AIA. And I was completely captivated. I was just getting started on this journey and I never knew that I was taking up a torch for an architect that I would never meet but the man that was responsible for much of the mid-century look and the charm that we once took for granted in this city. And so since then, I've become Haver's authorized biography, digging deep to catalog and document his work and helping to authenticate the provenance of his buildings, such as the Kimsey, and drawing out the stories of the people who are hungry to hear so they can connect with their built environment and the characters of history that really inspire them. Haver's award-winning masterworks, like the first federal savings and loan on the site of Fashion Square and the Seneca Pre Theater have been ravaged by lack of foresight into their future. So we have an opportunity to amend that here with the reexamination of the Kimsey property, around which the new development proposed tonight has created a hub of circulation and celebration that could serve as a model for how to do preservation right in harmony with its environment and respect to the people that live, work, and play here. 
Now, not two years ago, this building was on the chopping block. Can you imagine Indian School Road without it? But through the insightful and sensitive imaginations of the design and development team, they found a way to make things work and a compatible surrounding plan that honors this Scottsdale icon. I encourage the commissioners tonight to approve the development plans as presented and to pursue historic preservation of this property and help forge a way for the past and present needs of our time to inspire a new generation. So let's do something historic together, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is there anything from the team that is representing the Kimsey uh, that they would like to present now? Chair, members of the commission, before we formally start our presentation and the countdown clock begins, we would respectfully request some additional time and forbearance on the 10 minute limit given the scope of this and importance of this uh, project that Ms. King so ably uh, uh, described to you. Uh, would that be in accord with, uh, with the wishes of the chair and uh, the commission? If any commissioner objects, please raise the hand in um, the participant piece. Seeing none, continue on. Thank you, Chair, members of the commission. For your record, my name is John Berry, 6750 East Camelback Road in Scottsdale. And this hearing tonight is a first for our city. New development is saving an historic building. A building that once served as city hall a building that will anchor a $150 million mixed use project, a building that will celebrate a pioneer family, the Kimseys, with a 112 year history, even before there was a Scottsdale, a building that was going to be bulldozed until a new team was hired and began collaborating with the community and especially a valued collaboration with the historic present, uh, preservation community. In fact, those six letters in your package are uh, from the historic preservation advocates throughout our valley. Now, being asked to join the new team was a particularly meaningful ask for me. I grew up in Scottsdale. My family moved here in 1960. I won't tell you how old I was in 1960, but I was alive. Um, and my brother and I used to ride our bicycles to this uh, area. In fact, immediately next door to the west, there is still the barber shop where my brother and I used to get our hair cut. And but for small uh, uh, deviations from residency in Scottsdale, when I went to the University of Arizona for undergrad school and then on to Stanford for law school, I have been a proud uh, uh, denizen of Scottsdale. Now, this new team, very importantly, and much more importantly than the lawyer, was anchored and is anchored by architect Doug Sidnor. Doug is a 50-year resident of Scottsdale. He was the founder and driving force behind the establishment of the Historic Preservation Commission. And in fact, he was the first chair of the Historic Preservation Commission. Doug has served on countless, I think it's over 200 boards, commissions, task forces in the city of Scottsdale in his, uh, in his career. I do have to give him a hard time that he actually got his master's in architecture from the Stanford of the East, which is Harvard. Um, but he was also served as president of the American <laughs> Institute of Architects in the Arizona chapter for the entire state. This new team anchored by Doug Sidnor is very proud and very pleased to be able to present this historic first to you for our community. Doug? Thank you, John, and, and good evening to all of you at the Historic Preservation Commission. We are gonna move fairly quickly through a few images to tell a little bit more about this story. Of course, again, the focus is on our proposed HP zoning overlay plan, as you see here in the dashed yellow line, which includes the 1962 Kimsey Building uh, footprint, along with the open space in front of it to provide a proper setting for this historic structure. So our story really begins, as John touched on, over 110 years ago with the Kimsey family. This is William and Elizabeth Kimsey. They were farmers in Indiana. 
and Miss Kimsey had some health issues and was uh, challenged with the harsh winters of Indiana. So they came to Scottsdale uh, during the winters. And soon after their arrival, they were really enamored with the place and purchased five acres on the north side of Indian School Road. And it's there that they constructed three homes, including their own residence, which you see here. Uh, Mr. Kimsey also knew his fruit trees. So he planted an orchard of orange trees, uh, which you see here in this 1937 aerial. They're literally to the upper right uh, in this image. They had three children, uh, one of which was Lois, their daughter. And she was working in, in, in Indiana and she met this attorney, Thomas Marshall. They did get married. He eventually became the governor of Indiana and also the vice president of the United States for two terms under President Woodrow Wilson. They too were enamored with Scottsdale, purchased some property on the south side of Indian School, constructed their own home, and then came out here for the winters for many, many years. They also had two sons, one of which was Mort, you see here. Of the three children, he became probably the most committed uh, to Scottsdale. Uh, he, along with his father, had many, many firsts in our community in various leadership positions. Uh, for example, he actually brought the first gas, gas station to us on the northeast corner of Scotsdale Road in Maine. He also served on the first city council, as you see here. He's in the lower right. Um, that was after we got incorporated in 1951. He then continued a few years later, become our second mayor in 1958 to 1962. The family continued to own this property for decades, and it was in 1960, they struck a 50-year lease with uh, Butler Homes, owned by a David Friedman. The next year, the original residence was, in fact, removed, and then it was, was said in 1961 that commissioned Ralph Haver, extremely well-known mid-century modern architect in the Valley, to design uh, this project, and the construction was completed in 1962. And as John touched on, this in fact served as our Scottsdale City Hall from 1963 until 1968. And obviously there have been dozens of other tenants over the last many, many years. John mentioned an earlier team was actually involved in this project. Uh, they had a particular design approach. It did remove the Kimsey building and the massing diagram on the left reflects what that uh, once was. The new team arrived, including all of us, along with many others, and we developed the massing on the right. And this is a detail of that. The blue in the foreground is, in fact, the Kimsey building. We are wanting to preserve uh, some space around it to let it breathe. We were trying to stage it to be very prominent as you view the, view the property from Indian School Road. The open space in front of us will also carry with the building and, and stay as open space for a proper setting for this historically significant structure. The green that you see is the proposed residential. It reflects that the massing is stepped back at different levels. And on the Indian School Road frontage, it does in fact respect without exception the uh, required design standards in the zoning ordinance. The purple, which you can't see to the right is the hotel, which will show some Im images of that in just a moment. We did study the context in a great deal of detail. Uh, we definitely wanted to borrow the shaded arcades that we find in our specialty research districts in the upper right. Uh, there's public art. We're bringing a conceptual public art plan to the program. We're very interested in these more intimate, pleasant outdoor patios and courtyards as well. We also looked at the materiality in downtown, which we'll talk a little bit more about in just a moment. We studied the body of Haver architecture in Scottsdale, and through our research, we believe there are approximately 15 projects that he was responsible for. Unfortunately, we've lost five of them to demolition. So the idea that we're looking at preserving and rehabilitating the Kimsey building by Haver is a real rare opportunity, and hope we all uh, jointly seize upon that. And some other examples of his work. Looking at the materials, we really are being heavily influenced by the surroundings and the context. We have strong biases toward a more natural palette of materials like the exposed masonry, natural metals. On the lower right, we're actually exploring some accent colors that 
kind of reflect mid-century modern uh, character. Uh, this is the first of a few views we'd like to share with you. We're on Indian School Road looking north. Again, the Kimsey Building is in the foreground, uh, prominently uh, positioned to be easily viewed as you walk up and down Indian School or drive by the property. Again, the open space in front of it to set uh, the proper stage for it. We're doing a very aggressive street uh, skate program fronting on Indian School as well as on Third Avenue to the north. You're seeing the massing of the building kind of step back. Um, we're actually landscaping where it does step back with these outdoor terraces. There's also some cantilevered shading devices on the upper levels to mitigate the volumes a bit. You're also seeing to the upper right uh, some recessed wraparound uh, balconies to kind of uh, erode those potentially hard edges. So it really softens the overall impact. Another view on Indian School, uh, this is just to the west of the Kimsey building with some townhomes in the foreground. They're multi-level, very large units, very luxurious units. We are exploring work-live units where at the first level there might be some office and or small retail space. In front of it, you're seeing this folded uh, plate shading uh, device or canopy, which is a direct reference back to the Kimsey building. You're also finding it on other Ralph Haber work in the Valley, particularly uh, the original Coronado High School in the Southern part of our community. And then the building steps back, as I mentioned in the earlier view. Jumping to the North, we're on Third Avenue. This is kind of the proposed streetscape program with uh, new shade trees, new uh, ground covers, this is the hotel uh, entry in front of you with a large port cochere where we kind of widen the canopy to provide shade. We do anticipate water features, some creative signage. Uh, the lobby's off to your, your right. To the far left is that mid-block public passageway that we're proposing from Third Avenue down to Indian School. Also wanted to note that the first level of the hotel, there's this very open, transparent quality between the interior uses and the street. We're programming the hotel at that first level to help activate the street, such as the hotel lobby, a lounge area, restaurant, alfresco dining, a bar, which really will activate the full length of that elevation. Jumping to the northwest corner of the proposed development, this is the hotel with its upper levels. We wanted to feature some exposed masonry that's again a direct reference to some adjacent structures, particularly the office building to the east, we're proposing a dusty green color on the upper levels, which is a direct visual reference to the landscape of the Sonoran Desert. We're breaking the roof profile where we have a large terrace and swimming area up above, and then the thin canopy floating up above where we have an interior conditioned fitness center. I want to talk about pedestrian connections within the project. We talked about those covered walkways in the context we were proposing that at the North Edge uh, on Third Avenue and also partially to the south of Nina School Road in front of the townhomes. And then you're seeing the bin block passageway on the east edge uh, from Third Avenue to Indian School. There's also some secondary means of moving through the center of the project. This is kind of before and after on Third Avenue, the venue which we're proposing to remove and the streetscape on the right. Vehicular access. It focuses on a node on the northeast corner where we have in and out vehicular traffic. From there, you move into the purple area, which is the hotel entry, or to the south into brighter green, which is the residential uh, lobby for that part of the project. And then just to the left is a two-way uh, ramp that takes you down to the lower level parking. There's a secondary means to get to the garage is it at the lower left southwest corner. You can move north up the alley, make a quick right into uh, that second two-way ramp. We've had a, on our team a very important historic preservation consultant at Ryden Architects. Uh, Don Ryden is with us tonight if you have any questions. Uh, his report is composed of four uh, voluminous, very detailed and thorough reports. It reflects a lot of his due diligence, a lot of research, a lot of documentation, the first is the existing conditions documentation. The second is the building condition assessment from all aspects, all the structural engineering, MP&E, 
uh, as well. The third is the preliminary building code review in terms of how the existing structure potentially meets the current applicable building codes. And then lastly is the historic preservation plan and design guidelines. And this is the particular document that would be coming back to you for a much more full and thorough review, assuming all of our entitlements go well. And then just to remind us, we're here to really focus on the HP zoning overlay plan as proposed in the dashed yellow line. And just our last image is the Kinsey building. Uh, we're here to propose preserving it, rehabilitating it. Uh, we think it's a very iconic, iconic jewel in our downtown and hopefully we'll all jointly move forward in, in doing just that. So at this time, we'd be happy to Answer any uh, questions you have. Uh, we'll go from there. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Barry. This is uh, Chair Schweiger. Are there any comments or questions from the commission? Commissioner Kinchin. Yes, hi, good evening. Uh, Commissioner Kinchin here. And first, I just wanted to thank the team, um, John, Susan, Doug, Dawn for their hard work on this. Um, I have simply loved learning about the redevelopment and I was so thrilled to see the Kimsey Triangle building being incorporated uh, with an adaptive reuse. And so I was even more excited to see the desire to work with uh, having the property designated historic by the city of Scottsdale. It just makes me smile. So I'm in overwhelming support of uh, the HP overlay. And I love the creative vision to grow into the future. It's kind of like, you know, we're a mid-century city, but we're, you know, we can still grow and we can still do new things. So it's almost like a, a new century modern. And um, I'm just so excited for this forward thinking project and for more like this. I think this is a great example of moving forward with the community, but also still improving where we all live. Um, so I'm, I'm just so thrilled about this. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Kinchin. Commissioner Hosmer. Hi, Peter Hosmer. Well, I want to thank the team. Um, I commend you for being so brave and bold uh, with the cost of real estate and the density that would be required to afford at the acquisition. Uh, this is quite a sacrifice. And uh, obviously I've been in Phoenix. Uh, I've been here almost my entire life. And like John Barry, I also went to the barber just down the street. Um, I did get a presentation from Doug Sidnor and Susan Bittersmith prior to this meeting. And um, I think what they're doing to preserve this is, is wonderful. Um, I know this has, it, it's only about the overlay. Obviously I'm curious to see what we can do with the back of the building. I drove around it the other day and looked at it and uh, Mr. Sidnor, as you and I both like four-sided architecture, you know, I'm sure uh, something will uh, be repaired on the back of the building to make it more fitting to the courtyard that you're creating back there. Anyway, that's all my comments. Thank you. Thank you. This is uh, Chair Schweiger again. I just wanted to thank you uh, all for bringing this in this way to us. It's very exciting. I, I too grew up, um, I'm a fifth generation Arizona and my grandfather helped do all the engineering at some of the neighborhoods just down the street. I used to walk in front of this building on my way to the sugar bowl for my guitar lessons when I was young. So um, thank you, um, I'm very grateful. Uh, seeing no other comments, I am ready to entertain a motion Commissioner Hosmer. I'll make a motion to approve 10 ZN to 2020, the Kimsey Triangle for the zoning change and the HP designation for the site. Thank you so much, Commissioner Kinchin. Hi, Commissioner Kinchin here and I enthusiastically second that motion. Okay, Ms. Hemby, can we do a roll call vote, please? Chair Schweiger? Yes. Vice Chair Davis? Yes, and thank you for your efforts to save the building. Commissioner Brousseau? Yes. Commissioner Edmonds? Yes. 
Commissioner Hosmer. Aye. Commissioner Kinchin. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you. Thank you. The motion passes. We look thank forward you all to very much. Come back around once you get through City Council. And thank you so look much. Forward to it. Thank you so much. Okay. That moves us out of regular agenda items and we now move to commissioner announcements. Commissioner Hosmer. I uh, would just like to do a shout out to uh, Ben Brousseau for all the work that he's done for promoting historic preservation and educating the, uh, the realtors, and all the behind the scenes things that we don't see that he's doing. Um, I'd also like to shout out to Christy Kitchen for her efforts and obviously keeping track of historic uh, buildings much like this one and of course like the Polynesian on McDowell. Your enthusiasm and uh, insight is, is much appreciated and uh, to also to Blair Schweiger for her involvement with the Citizen Review Committee. Thank you. Thank you, and I certainly concur with, with what you had to say about Commissioners Brousseau and Kinchin. Thank you for your hard work, guys. Any other commissioner announcements? Okay, barring none, are there any proposed future agenda items from the commission? Okay, seeing none, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for coming and participating. Thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful night. Yay. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Hey.